Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Confessions of a Gaming Mum. So today I wanted to talk about, and I'm sure people are going to be like rolling their eyes at this, about feminism. That wonderful, wonderful word called feminism. Basically, it's just one of those things where every so often you think, oh, it's like things are improving within the, within the games industry. Yay for feminism, everything like that, and that things are moving forward and moving in a positive direction and women are being taken seriously and just things like that. And then all of a sudden something comes along when you're like... And that moment has uh, come around again. Obviously, I'm sure a lot of people will know about the latest release of the PlayStation exclusive Days Gone. You'll probably also know if you've been paying any sort of attention that it's been receiving mixed reviews from it being absolutely fantastic and really, really enjoyable game to just being really mediocre and not worth the weight or the hype that it was receiving at the time. And basically, from what I gather, there has been both male and female journalists that have been sharing their views sharing views that tend to be very similar in terms of they have negative negative things to say about how much the game is lacking in certain things in terms of character depth, story, just getting the character involved and feeling just in, in the game and everything. It seems that when men have this sort of opinion, have a negative opinion on a game and the characters and um, what's being included in the game or whatever, it's fine, it's accepted. As soon as a woman comes along and has the same sort of views and talks about the characters and there not being a lot of depth or involvement for the for the player to feel like they're involved in the game. They get comments such as this. Well, what would you know? You're just a woman. You don't know anything about gaming. Oh, you're only upset because this character isn't a woman. It's twice like that, which is why we need feminism, because they just will not fuck off. I don't see where this whole gatekeeping thing comes from. More than 50%, that's more than half the people that play computer games are women. Shock, horror, it's time you accepted that. I've been playing games since the early 90s and I know women that have been playing for a lot longer than that. Get your fucking head out of your ass and realise that it's not a male dominated industry. I mean, technically it is because, like I said before in, in videos, men in suits run these freaking companies, but that's that's by the by. But people that play the games, it's not just men only. It's not like there's a sticker or a, in like game shops that just say girls not allowed. Fucking stupid. Oh, it just really annoys me. Like, yeah, I never saw a problem with it when I was younger. I never saw an issue with the fact that I was a girl that played games. It never was an issue. I mean, it was the whole thing. I mean, growing up, I didn't know a lot of girls that played games, but it wasn't something where I was just like, oh, I'm a firebrand, I'm I'm leading the way in uh, feminism when it comes to gaming and things like that. I was just like, no, it was just something that I enjoy doing. Girls at my age, when I was when I was a lot younger, were playing with Barbies. I was playing with dinosaurs. So <laughs> it's just it's just how things things were. I never thought of myself as being anything special or anything different because I played computer games, and I was it's there for everyone it really should not matter who plays games or who reviews them or who makes them it's pathetic it really is and people need to fucking grow up because I'd also like to talk about another thing me going back to the games industry I don't know if a lot of people saw there was an article that was going around I couldn't read it because I had to uh, pay to read it but someone was kind enough to uh, to share the screenshots of the uh, article basically where there's an app that uh, employers can actually have where they can spy on their female employees to know if they're planning for children, if they're pregnant, if they're having a baby and like their menstrual cycle and just the shit like that and like just looking into their personal life. So then they can know when this when this woman is is planning to have a child with her with her partner. They use the whole excuse when they were found out. I should say this is um I think the main culprit was Activision. I don't know if other companies were were involved. The screenshot that I saw it was talking about Activision. Their excuse was quite Excuse me, okay, okay, I can understand that. When they were saying things like, if we 
sort of butt into these these women's personal lives and see what's going on um, in their lives, like to see if they're if they're having healthy children, if their pregnancy is is good and like running smoothly and everything. Then obviously we're able to cater to them and make sure they are receiving the care that they need and different things like that. It's then when you read further into it and they say stuff like, because a healthy woman having a healthy baby means she can get back to work quicker. Really? Really? Oh my god! I have to say though that I can imagine this that sort of attitude doesn't just fall on gaming companies, that's probably for every single company that basically exists. If they were given the chance to have this sort of app to nosy like in on, on their uh, female employees, I'm pretty sure they would jump at the chance because that's the sort of attitude they would have. But it's the fact that someone from Activision has actually come out and said that and seen it as a good thing. I'm lost for words, <laughs> I really am, it's like, really? Just, I just, I just can't get my head around it. It's, like I said, this is why we need feminism, <laughs> really. I can't, like, drive this home enough. It's, it's just, it's pathetic. And like I said, we don't just need it within the games industry. Obviously, this, this video is about having it within the, like, feminism needs to be within the games industry because it's still so blatantly sexist. But it's also just feminism in general, in life in general, it's awful. I mean, I know for first hand in terms of how pe how you're discriminated against when you're pregnant. I mean, for me personally, I, w I, I handed my notice in with my last job because I was really stressed with it and I couldn't, I couldn't take the stress anymore. It was making me ill, or I thought it was making me ill. So I handed in my notice in my last week is when I actually found out I was pregnant. So there wasn't really anything I could I could do about it. I, I walked away from that job. But I knew it was the right thing to do because I don't think I could have dealt with the stress of that job as well as having a healthy pregnancy. So yeah, that, I, I'll never regret that decision. But I honestly thought, because my naive self, that I could then just take temp work while I was pregnant and then once um, the baby was due I'd just stop and obviously I could claim the um, benefits that they have in the UK for because uh, they you, you get statutory maternity pay if you if you're not working if your your company doesn't supply or doesn't have their own maternity pay um, rules or whatever so that was the initial plan and I thought I'll be honest, every single because I, I basically tried to sign up to a load of agencies. So I signed up to all these agencies and told them straight. Obviously, it was a bit difficult to to not notice this big bump. And I told them, yeah, I'm I'm pregnant and I'm looking to work up until my baby's due in September. Oh, oh, okay. Um, yeah, we'll we'll let you know if we if anything comes up. Yeah, we'll let you know. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. In the entire time, that's about six months that I was looking nothing I never heard anything in the end I just gave up because I was I was traveling into London paying a lot of money that I didn't have for train tickets to go to these interviews with agencies and absolutely nothing came up there wouldn't be anything wrong with with my CV not that I'm saying that I'm absolutely amazing but I have I have a good CV I have a good work history um, and it's not as if like I, I, I didn't work hard at all the jobs that I did so I don't see how anyone would look at my CV and be like, oh no, we don't want this person. It would have been because they would have been told that this woman's pregnant and they're like, oh no, I don't want the responsibility. But obviously they won't tell you that. They'll just, they'll say, oh no, we've just found another candidate. You're not the right candidate, blah, 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 blah. So you can't prove it. You can't prove that they're, they're discriminating against you because you're pregnant. And it's fucking frustrating. It really is. I could have done with that money. It was six, well, how long was it? Four months I ended up going without any money because the way the, the statutory maternity pay that I, I got worked, if you were out of out of work for a certain amount of time, you have to be claiming your be claiming your benefits. But I thought obviously it would be once the baby's born, that's when I start claiming it. It doesn't work that way. So I ended up started started receiving it early which meant that it finished early. So basically when my son was six months old, that's when the, the payment stopped because it started three months before he was born, which is pretty frustrating because um, although obviously it meant that we were able to afford the things we necessarily wouldn't have been able to afford before he was born. So it makes sense that way, but it also means that now he's here and costing us more money. <laughs> <laughs> it's um it's quite difficult to be able to be able to afford it but again it just goes back to back to the whole thing of because i was pregnant i was being discriminated against but i have no way of proving that so there's nothing i can actually do about it and there's also the thing of like i can't i'm i because I'm, I'm still looking for work just to to have sort of one day a week where i can just 
have that little bit extra money to to help to to pay for our, our son and keeping us above uh, above water so to speak but again just nothing's coming up looking to work from home just nothing nothing's available and the cost of childcare over here is through the roof this is just a personal thing i just don't have the heart to leave my son he's nearly eight months and i just don't have the heart to leave him with complete strangers i really don't especially because i'm breastfeeding still so it's not exactly something that would be an ideal situation especially because i don't because i'd need to find somewhere that has decent um sort of breast milk pumping laws so that i can have my my time to to pump enough to actually feed my son when i'm not there and no i'm not putting him on formula <laughs> so yeah it's it's still there there are a lot of rights for women that are having families and that want to go on to have kids but it's still there's still so much more to go in terms of that's why women get paid less because it's the whole thing of oh well she might go off and start a family so we don't really want to put too much finance like financial risk into her because she might just fuck off one day and and start pumping out kids and and sort of shit like that it's just it's not fair but then you also have the other side of the spectrum where in this country anyway men don't get or they don't tend to get a decent paternity leave i think it's like two weeks paternity i mean what's that i mean when with my son i was in hospital for for five days after he was born so my husband spent half of his paternity in hospital not being able to really like enjoy being with his family and stuff or well, yeah the, the first few days he, he, he ha even had to go home he couldn't stay the entire time it was only we started insisting that he stayed because i couldn't handle being there on my own all the time that um they actually let him stay on like special conditions but yeah i think i'm kind of digressing a bit but yeah it's just from my own experience the, like we still have so much to to do in terms of making it more fair but well for families in general not just for for women in in terms of that as well it's yeah it's the whole thing it's just like i said just feminism in general just needs to be taken seriously because like i said there's just so much that these companies just take for granted and being like i said men in suits they really don't give a shit they enough probably that their wives can stay at home and don't have to worry about going to work so they won't feel for the 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 woman whose husband earns less than her so she's the main breadwinner but they also want to be able to have children but they can't because they they need her money i think i, I kind of knew about it and it annoyed me originally but now as a as a mum myself it really you really do see it more clearly and it just frustrates me to just the point of distraction <laughs> and also yeah the whole thing i mean just with the way people are in general in terms of or i should say with the way the guys are in general in terms of the gaming industry companies need to be doing more to discourage this sort of attitude in their customers and they're not it's not something that they can just sweep under the rug and it's like oh just let them fight amongst themselves no you have to be doing something because these are the people that are buying your games you're not discouraging this behavior i mean it's, what can you do you can't ban someone from from playing the games but i don't even know what the solution would be i'm <laughs> i've got such a baby brain right now i'm just kind of like Bleh, just do something but yeah it's it's just one of those things like i said it's it, you go for a few months just thinking oh yeah everything's fantastic everything's great oh yeah we still have a few issues but we get heading in the right direction and then something like this happens gatekeeping people just being general wankers really and we all need to just stop being wankers and realize that gaming is for all whether it's playing the game or making the game i said it's there for everyone and it's just it's it's pathetic when people start saying it's not for for you this is like this is my hobby this isn't for you it just shows how insecure you are to be honest so the fact that like you don't like girls playing games is it just because like you can't get a girlfriend <laughs> so it just you just are very bitter about women in general and that's how it feels anyway so anyway i think i'm going to end the video there because i feel like i'm just rambling about quite a serious subject that we could probably actually talk a lot more about if i actually did prep <laughs> <laughs> but I tend to just like to ramble sometimes because then it seems more natural if I if I ramble rather than writing out a script if you get my meaning I mean the an annoying thing is I sometimes forget what I'm going on about and then go off on a tangent or forget to mention like a really important thing and I'm like shit why didn't I say that but then it could be that I come back and do and another thing but yeah be interested to see what other people what um you guys think of, of the subject I mean 
Have you seen a lot of these articles, like these reviews? Have you played Days Gone? I haven't had a chance to play it yet. I really want to though, because from what I saw before, it looked really good. Although I'm, I'm slightly apprehensive because of the because of the reviews, but I'd like to sort of make my own decision about it rather than listen to reviews. Because with uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I thought Shadow of the Tomb Raider was amazing. All the reviews were it's shit. It's the worst Tomb Raider. It's not really very good because it won't make my crystal dynamic. But that's by the by. I hope you enjoyed another rambling video by me. If you think there's any important points I missed um, about feminism and gaming, then please do comment. And I would love to, if we, can, if I can get enough points, then then yeah, I will definitely make another video about it. Yeah, or if you just disagree with me that um, you think we we have come a, a long way in terms of um, with feminism and women's rights within the games industry and just the gaming community in general. Um, it'd just be interesting to hear everyone's, everyone's opinion on it really. So yeah, leave a comment below. Um, also like the video, cause that really helps me out. And also subscribe as well if you haven't already. I'm trying to build up a, a decent um, community here of uh, not just gaming mums, everyone, because I'm inclusive of everyone. So <laughs> I don't like to gatekeep. So yeah, it was lovely um, speaking to you all and I look forward to all your comments. And, uh, and I shall see you all in the next video. Bye.